Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. I'm rolling solo today. I'm rolling solo today, but I got I got some folks down in the chat chat who are going to keep me honest and keep me entertained. We're talking about recruiting today. Uh, yes, Austin says hi. Um, Zach says hi in his own way. Uh, you know, uh, sails are full and the ship is filling with water. Well, there's one person. It's not so much that it's filling with water. Just we have one person on the oars. So we're just kind of spinning in circles. We're talking recruiting today. This is going to be our first mock for the 2024 class. So let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Um, if you've never watched me do recruiting before, um, just an FYI, I, there, there are going to be some names I mess up. I'm going to mess up some names. It, it, it's, it's a tradition here at the Sloopcast that I'm, I'm terrible at... Some? Yeah, well, there, there's some easy ones. There's some easy ones. There are some layups. I'm going to get the layups. I promise. I'm going to get the layups. I'm going to, I'm going to miss there. The, however, there is, there's one or two that I just know I have zero shot at as well. So, and then there'll be a few in the middle. So let's, the easy ones will be the, the mess ups. No, no, no. There, there's a, there's a doozy or two. Um, right, Let's get started with everyone's favorite position, the quarterback. Um, everyone knows Ohio State had their guy. They had Rayola. Rayola changes his mind. It happens, especially at the quarterback, especially at the quarterback position, but uh, everywhere in college football. And no, it's not new. Players decommitted all the time. Of course, now you have the transfer portal, which very much is new, but that's a different story for a different day. So let's talk quarterbacks. Uh, two guys I want to mention changes his mind is a way to put it. Well, we're, we're, we're not talking about Rayola today. We're, we're not, we're not doing that. We'll talk about Jaden Davis a bit. Um, Jaden Davis is out of the God. I want uh, Jaden Davis to flip over to OSU. Well, he's not committed yet. People have him penciled in and there's, you know, there's like some legit crystal balls. Like I, I think um, Will Fong among them placing him to Michigan right now. I'll, it's a uh, no Lind with a D Stewart and we'll get there. Uh, Jaden Davis is, uh, as I just mentioned, crystal balled to Helen back to Michigan right now. He was a guy that Ohio state was in on a very long time ago. Then Rayola committed and listen, Stuart, if you're going to make fun of me for, for mispronouncing names, then I get to make fun of you for spelling. Uh, Jaden Davis is, uh, you know, in the time since that Ohio State sort of stopped recruiting him because they had Rayola, he is now, you know, in, in good with Michigan. Will that change? Will that, is that something Ohio State can quote unquote correct? I asked this question once a while ago and I felt better then than I do now. I don't feel great about that now. So we move on. Uh, I, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it's impossible, but I, I am going to say that maybe we move on. Uh, I think we move on to Air Noland, uh, quarterback out of Georgia, out of Fairborn, Georgia, uh, just outside the top 100 overall players in the country. I think this is Ohio State's guy. I think this is Ohio State's guy. I, I think in, until we hear otherwise, until we see otherwise, uh, I think this is Ohio State's guys. He's a 99 in the composite. Uh, a 99 in? Oh, 99th in the composite. Okay. Uh, I, I must be looking. I have the 24-7 proper up. Uh, Ryan Day is the best Michigan quarterback recruiter ever. I don't know what that means. Um. So let's move on. Let's so where we're doing a mock, let's officially uh, pencil in Air Noland for the time being. Um, running backs. Uh, I do think the Ohio State takes two running backs, and I don't know that they have to um, leave the state to get their two guys. Uh, there's Sam Williams Dixon, who I, I think uh, who's out of Pickerington North. I, I think that you can almost write this one in. 
He's not not highly ranked as of yet. Hey, Austin, you're 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 just like Stewart in the quarterback. You're one ahead of me. Um, Sam William uh, Sam Williams Dixon, I think, is a guy who I think has a very strong chance of ending up on this roster. I'm going to include him in the mock. Next out of Archbishop Moeller is Jordan Marshall. Um, again, uh, as Austin sort of beat us to this one, but, uh, again, not leaving the Ohio area for this kid, um, has recruiting stars behind him, uh, top 200 player nationally, um, is almost top 10 running back in the country. I think these are the two guys. I think these are the two guys for Ohio state. Um, I think they want two running backs. I think these are the two running backs, uh, that keep an eye on James Peoples, a running back out of the uh, Texas area, out of San Antonio, Texas, number seven running back in the composite. Well, I'm using the 24 seven proper rankings today. F you. Eh, that's fair. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> excuse me. You're welcome to your opinion. I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. <clears throat> Wide receiver. Everyone's favorite recruiting group at the Ohio State University. Because <clears throat> why not love the group where you get the most love, right? Um, already in the class is Jeremiah Smith uh, from Madonna Prep in Florida. <clears throat> this is an incredibly talented wide receiver, best wide receiver in the country. One of the best players in the recruiting class, period. Absolutely tremendous athlete, absolutely tremendous wide receiver, committed to Ohio State, and he's he's not going anywhere. I, I'm just gonna say it. I know there's talks and I know there's rumblings. He's 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 the best, he's one of the best players in the country, and he's out of state. You're gonna deal, you're gonna have to get used to rumors and whatnot that are placing him elsewhere. You will be dealing with this until December. Just get used to it. It's fine. Uh, I, he's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Also helpful uh, is his teammate is also a, currently a strong Ohio State lean. Uh, just I a trader. I am going to include him in the wide receivers. He's currently listed as an athlete on the 24-7 site. Um, it's not 100% that he ends up a wide receiver, but I, I'm going to consider him a wide receiver until further notice. Um, uh, Austin says he has seen him play. He's a receiver. I agree. That's why I'm including him with the with the wide receivers. I, I completely agree. Awesome. Um, another name to keep an eye out in the wide receivers uh, although I'm not going to include him in this mock would be Makai Hudson. Uh, he's out of Texas. Uh, he's in that sort of smaller wide receiver mold. Best wide receiver duo in the country down there. Oh, yeah, it's not even close. It's not even close, Austin. It's, it, no one else is in the conversation. Uh, and I do think Ohio State gets both of them. Indiana guy. Uh, yeah, once again, one ahead of me, uh, Stuart, one ahead of me. So that's Makai Hudson, smaller guy, uh, incredibly talented wide receiver out of Texas. There's a relationship there. He's worth mentioning. I'm not putting him in the mock. I am putting in the mock, however, Mylon Graham, who, as uh, Stuart has already pointed out, is a wide receiver out of New Haven, Indiana. Uh, top 10 wide receiver in the country. Putting, I'm including him in this mock. Um, like Trader and like Hudson, he's a bit on the smaller side. Um, you, you could see one or both of those guys um, sort of playing the JSN slot role. Um, I, I kind of see Trader more in that role than I do Graham, but both, I, I think, generally in that mold. Um, and then... The fourth wide receiver I will include in this is Terrence Moore. Uh, he is also out of Florida. Um, he's out of Tampa Catholic. Uh, Austin says there's a pretty good shot that Heartline gets Smith, Trader, Hudson, and Graham, dear God. It is not impossible. It's not impossible. I just don't. I'm just not going to give him Hudson at this time. 
Uh, Zach, maybe. Tight end. Um, I do think Ohio State could go two tight ends here. Um, and I, I think first and foremost, we're going to go to uh, if Hudson. Uh, I don't think Ohio State takes more if Hud if they can get Hudson. Yes, I agree. Uh, if, if it's a choice between the two, I don't think it's even a, a choice for what it's worth. Uh, it's it's not a choice. It's it's but I just they won't take five wide receivers. No. Now. They take four at most in this class. I agree. Now, maybe. Maybe they don't see Trader as a wide receiver. Maybe Trader doesn't see Trader as a wide receiver and therefore it's four plus Trader. But you and I are already in agreement, Austin, that he's a he's a wide receiver. I mean, he would be a corner otherwise. Exactly. Um, two tight ends to keep an eye on in this class. These will be the two tight ends I include in this mock. Um, one is uh, Darmian Witten. Uh, he is out of Glenville in in Cleveland. Glenville is back on top of their shit, and Ohio State is benefiting. Uh, this will not be the last Glenville player who we mention in this mock draft. Uh, we do need corners. We'll 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 get there. We'll get there. Um, the other tight end uh, I will be including in this class is Max LeBlanc. Max LeBlanc is out of Tennessee. Um, Ohio. Uh, can you spell that? Which one? Demarion Witten? I can because it's in my notes. I think that's wrong. LeBlanc, not LeBlanc. Yeah, you're probably right. Demarion. Oh, you're saying I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a given. That's a given. Demarion. 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 Demar. Yeah, it's it's is it a, is that a long? OK, I, you're probably right, Stuart. You're probably right. Um. So, yeah, those are the two tight ends. Oh, mare like a horse. Demarion. Got it. Guys, I, I love y'all. See, guys, this uh, YouTube commenters, this is how it works. They, they they just say, oh, hey, I think it's actually pronounced like this. And then they give it to me in a way in which my dumbass can actually read it. YouTube, we are just used to it at this point. I've beaten them into submission. I've absolutely beaten them into submission with low standards in my ability to pronounce things. Oh boy, that got them both typing. Unpaid employees. <laughs> yeah. So can Ohio State get Brandon Baker or will Seton be the best offensive line in this class? This is, by the way, this is Austin just pushing me along. Like, hey, Jared, get to the next group. This class is low on offensive linemen. The good, well, I disagree, but I also... Let's get there. Let's get there. Th this class is not low on offensive linemen as long as you're looking at interior offensive linemen. I I think Ohio State will be uh, fantastic putting together a class of interior offensive linemen. Once again, they don't really even need to leave the state to do that. They already have uh, Ian Moore and Mark. I'm going to go Nave. It might be Nave. Um, you guys let me know. Um, Mark Nave, Ian Moore, uh, already two guys in the fold. Um, Moore is from New Palestine, Indiana. Nave is from Toledo, Ohio. Um, Ian Moore, top 100 player in the country. Nave, nope, Nave, we're sticking with Nave. Nave, uh, not a high ranked guy, but, um, not a high ranked guy, but he's moving up the boards, sort of a, a late rising Ohio kid like we see in the rankings sometimes. I will add one offensive tackle who I feel good about. 
one offensive tackle who I feel very good about, um, and that's Deontay Armstrong. He's one of uh, two Armstrongs. No reason Ohio State can't get Satter White. Slow down for me, Austin. One of two Armstrongs um, in this. Uh, I would also love to flip Hamilton, too. You're, you're, you're just way too ahead of me, Austin. Uh, one of two Armstrongs. There's a pair of twins play in St. Edwards uh, at Lakewood, Ohio. Um, one of them, uh, Deontay Armstrong. One, Devontae Armstrong. Uh, Deontay Armstrong is an offensive tackle. Devontae Armstrong is an interior offensive lineman. I believe Ohio State. Mark Nave. I already mentioned Mark Nave. Um, I, I think that Ohio State... Uh, can and will uh, get both of these guys to to come into the fold. Are you telling me I'm spelling it wrong, Stuart? Or are you just telling me you don't think we get the Armstrongs? I'm not sure what nope means. Um, now, if you're keeping track at home, that's three interior offensive linemen and, and one offensive tackle. Um, as Austin brought up, uh, Jordan, Se did you mention Jordan Seaton? Maybe you didn't. Um, no. Okay. Jordan Seaton, I think is another guy that Ohio state has a really good chance at a uh, highly ranked uh, guy out of DC. However, Oh, you did. I think, uh, is a guy Ohio state has a chance at, unfortunately, another interior guy. So Ohio state has to go looking for another offensive tackle. Will Fong has crystal balled him to OSU. Yes, yes, they have. Um, and this is why I do think Ohio State could potentially go as many as six offensive linemen here. Um, you could see Ohio State take four year interior offensive linemen and two offensive tackles. Now, the question starts to become who is that? I hear Ohio State making a later push for Lambert. Yeah. Here, here's the problem. There is a ton of uh, offensive tackles out there who Ohio State has a good relationship with. And I'm I'm doing a mock here. So I have to I have to pick one. Right. I think there's Jameson Riggs out of Georgia. Um, Austin already brought up Satterwhite, although unfortunately I think he's also an interior offensive lineman, so I'm not sure how that works out, but he's out of uh, Arch Hoban in Akron. There's Tommy uh, Reichard, who's another interior offensive lineman out of Hudson, Ohio. Um, there's a wealth, and I mean a wealth of interior offensive linemen for Ohio State to, to pick from inside the state of Ohio. Um to, to pick up a third offensive tackle, or excuse me, a second offensive tackle in state, they're going to have to do some work. Um, mostly because the two best offensive tackles in the state are one committed and two heavy lean, and uh, the second being a pretty heavy lean uh, to Michigan. Luke Hamilton out of Avon, Ohio, already committed to Ohio, or excuse me, already committed to Michigan. Um, I, I, I don't... I don't see that changing. I don't see a flip there. Um, so we should probably just, we'll just move on from Luke Hamilton. The guy we probably need to take a good hard look at is Ben Roebuck. Ben Roebuck, Ben Roebuck notably is a teammate of the Armstrong twins. Again, though, heavy crystal balls, heavy crystal balls, uh, sending him to Michigan. You, Ohio State needs to shore things up within the state here, I think. Um, and you can't lose your bet your best two offensive tackles in state to Michigan. When that has been, if we wanted them, we would have pursued them harder. You think Ohio State doesn't want Roebuck? But Jared is fine because Ryan Day is continuing to beat Michigan. So who cares if they leave? <sighs> a lot of people saying Armstrongs are better. That's fine. But why not get all three? Especially since one of the Armstrongs is an interior offensive lineman.
Continuity is maybe the most important thing along the offensive line. It's why the, the idea of getting a pair of twins is so exciting. The level of like continuity and communication between twins is insane. If you can bring in Roebuck along that same line, you'll have off. You have these three offensive linemen who've been playing together for years before they even got to Ohio State. I assume with their athletic build, they can play. They can both play tackle. Hey, man, I hope you're right. I, I do. Because again, Ohio State has options, has absolutely options along the interior of the offensive lines. They can they can rack up interior offensive linemen. One six seven, one six five. Uh, twenty four seven says six six and six five for what it's worth. I, I don't. I've not measured them personally, so I'm not gonna say that you're wrong. I'm just saying that's what twenty four seven says. Um. If, if you can convert and have them both play offensive tackle, that's amazing. That's great. I, I hope that's achievable. I hope they can do that. Um, because, again, you th there's a lot of places, again, within the state of Ohio, before you even bring up Jordan uh, Seton into the conversation, a lot of places inside the state of Ohio where you can fill all the interior offensive linemen you want. Um. That being said, if they have to go outside, if, if Ben Roebuck is going to go to Michigan and if Luke Hamilton's going to go to Michigan, which looks like is is, is the case, um, you have to look outside of the state to get that second offensive tackle. Uh, Jamison Riggs, Brandon Baker, Daniel Calhoun, I, I think are three names uh, who I think Ohio State has good relationships with. I think these are uh, very good possibilities for Ohio State. Um, it's hard for me to pick one because there, there's like a whole bunch of these like nationally prominent tackles who Ohio State has like a good relationship with, but not any one of them at this point feels like a guy who you can write in. Seton's about the only one, of course, Ian Moore's from Indiana. So I don't know. I kind of consider Indiana. If, if they're really good in their Indiana, I kind of consider them in state. I'll just say that. Um, but as far as like national guys go, the only like guy who I'd be willing to even sort of pencil in at this point is Seton. So I think I'll go ahead and include you know, I'll say Jamison Riggs, I think, is maybe that other offensive tackle, that 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 sixth offensive lineman, that second offensive tackle. I hope Stewart's right. I hope they can convert arm. I hope they can convert the interior Armstrong. Devontae, I believe, is the you know, interior one. Is that, yeah, Devontae. Um, I hope they can convert Devontae to a tackle. It would solve a lot of problems for Ohio State. Solve a lot of problems. Um, guys in the chat, you have any any questions, anything else you want to add on before we move on to the defense? We move on to the defense now. Anything did I miss anything? You have any questions before we move on to the defense? I don't see anyone typing, so I guess we'll move forward. Defensive tackle. Uh, defensive tackle, I see two or three guy, that one guy. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Stuart. Um, defensive tackle. Uh, I'm going to name three names here. I, I think all three of these guys are are realistic. Um, that other guy. Th thank you, Zach. I, I think the, the biggest moonshot here would be Aiden Breland uh, out of Mater Day. In, in California, uh, top 50 player nationally, top 10 in his position. Oh, the one guy. Oh, that one guy. You're, you're talking about Dominic Kirks, um, who is out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I think this is a, a really uh, promising, maybe late raising, late rising Ohio kid. Um, feels a little... The recruiting stuff isn't there yet, but we, we talk a lot about sort of late rising Ohio kids. Um, I, I think Dominic Kirks could be one of those guys. 
Um, and then head over to IMG Academy uh, to look at Jaden Jackson, who is another uh, defensive tackle. Could be a strong side defensive end, uh, but probably a defensive tackle. Um, again, not a super highly ranked guys. I think maybe you'd want him to be a tad taller, which might be why you don't see his his recruiting numbers being bigger. Um, but I think a realistic option for Ohio State. Uh, just for what it's worth, owning this right off the top, defensive tackle was like the 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 position, and I, I'm I'm not sure if maybe Ohio State just isn't that developed in their defensive tackle recruiting yet, or what it is, but that's just probably the position where I could find the least amount of information. So I took a couple shots there. I'm I'm just owning that right there. Probably of all the position groups, that's the one that I just feel the least confident on in my mock. So I'm just going to, I'm going to own that right there. Um, defensive end. I, I think not to backtrack, but did we get to get in the uh, Taven Galloway for tight end? Uh, he's committed to LSU. And I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think Ohio state's in that conversation. Do we get back in? No, I've I've not heard anything to make me think that Ohio State can get back in. Uh, the reality of the situation is, if you're an elite pass catching tight end, why why would you commit to Ohio State? I, it's just a reality of the situation. If you want to come here and be a third offensive tackle which by the way, can get you into the NFL and get you a long NFL career, you know, capable of catching the ball, absolutely capable of catching the ball, but a blocker first that can, Ohio State will teach you how to do that. And you have a long career in the NFL doing it. But if you want to be a guy who predominantly catches passes, don't know if this is the place for you. So we have defensive ends. What about Rudolph? I do not have Rudolph in my mock. Um, Cincinnati kid who is now in Florida. Um, I don't have him in my mock currently. Kind of. I have 25 guys. I have 25 guys in the mock. I, I think he is. Slap me. Okay. That, slap me. If you want to slap me, I'm just saying like. I did a 25 person mock. If I did 30, I probably would have included Rudolph. Just just how that is. Um, defensive ends, I currently have two in the class, although it probably could be three. So if it's three, maybe the third guy is Rudolph. Um, but I have uh, Darian Mayo, who is out of Maryland. Uh, he's an edge rusher, measuring at 6'7", 247, uh, just outside the top 100 players in the country. And I have Dylan Stewart, who is also uh, from the same general area. Uh, he's in Washington, D.C. Um, he is a top 30 player in the country. He's a five-star guy. That would be a huge pickup. It'd be a huge pickup for Ohio State. I think it's been a little bit since Ohio State got like an elite out of region, out of region defensive end. And I think this would be a huge pickup. Ohio State has um, recruited the Virginia, Washington, D.C. area with great success in recent years. Um Dylan Stewart might be the guy who sort of gets the defensive end recruiting, at least from a national perspective, that defensive end recruiting back in back in rhythm. Linebackers, um, I have Quan Birdsong from Georgia, uh, just outside the top 100. And I have Peyton Pierce, um, <coughs> excuse me, a linebacker out of Lovejoy, Texas, out of Lucas, Texas, the high school of Lovejoy. Um, Sammy Brown. Did not I do not have Sammy Brown in the in the mock. It's a good name. It's a good name. Just don't have him in the mock. Those are linebackers. Those are defensive ends. Uh, let's move on to corner. Fire Knowles. Why? Because I don't have him in the mock. <laughs> I I this is a mock in. March 
for a, a, a class that won't be finalized until December. If I get 50% of these names right, I celebrate. Reality of the situation. If Bolton doesn't commit fire Perry, we'll talk about Bolton. We'll talk about Bolton. That's a huge, that's a huge target though. Cornerback. I want, I have five names here. Ohio State will probably end up with four of them. Fair? Fair. Um, Again, this is a situation. Yep. Uh, West, exactly. This is another situation where Ohio State can sort of stay in state and get some really good players. Trader, I have Trader as a wide receiver. Uh, nope. Uh, yes. Stuart, yes. I have, I have Trader. Hey, listen. Trader's an amazing athlete. He's currently listed as a as, as a athlete on the 24-7 site. Could he move to corner? Sure. Will Ohio State let him play corner? Absolutely. Just get 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 Josiah Trader on the team and figure out what you do with him later. Amazing athlete. He'll be successful at whatever he does. If he can stay healthy and keep his head on straight and all that stuff that you have to do to sort of go from elite high school athlete to elite college athlete and make it into the NFL. If you can do all that stuff. It will be amazing. doesn't matter what position he plays, but get him on the team first. I cur- I have him in this mock as a wide receiver. Could I be wrong? Sure. Will I count it against myself when I review this in December? No, I won't. Cause I just said he's going to be on the team. Who cares what position he is? Bryce West out of Glenville, out of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, cornerback, uh, top 100 in the country. Um, it is, it, oh, this is a good Ohio class. This is a really good Ohio class. I, I think the big failure here for the Buckeyes is they're not doing a good job keeping everyone in state. Michigan's picking off guys. Um, LSU got one of the best players in the country um, to, to go. It is LSU, right? I'm suddenly doubt, doubting myself uh, to go play uh, tight end. Else, uh, it's it's one of the worst jobs Ohio State's done keeping everyone in state in a while, but yeah, it is Galloway. I just for some reason got insecure about where he was going. I don't know why. It's one of the worst jobs Ohio State's done keeping the 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 guys in state that we've seen in recent years. But I think that sort of comes with the fact that the talent in the state is actually really good this year. It's actually a really good talent year for the state of Ohio. Uh, Bryce West being one of those guys. Rudolph already left for Florida. That doesn't count. Um, also, uh, out of Springfield, Ohio, Aaron Scott. Uh, again, another great wide. Uh, just just uh, inside the top 250, according to 24-7, four-star kid. Uh, you get these two guys to stay in state come play for Ohio state. You're starting off this cornerback class really strong. You'd want to hopefully add. And this is where my third uh, my third player comes into play here. Add like an elite national guy on top of that. And maybe it's just Sia trader. Um, but I'm going Charles Lester, who is also out of Florida, out of Sarasota, Florida. Um, elite five star cornerback from Florida. Hey, Austin, I don't know Florida geography and our, and our resident South Florida expert isn't here. Where is Sarasota? Is it a South Florida? Is this a South Florida kid? I don't know. I don't know Florida geography. Um, Southwest still South. Still South. I know, of course, when they talk about South Florida, they typically talk about Miami area, but I'm counting it. Uh, he's a null Oz, or uh, Stewart says maybe we don't know yet. Um, I think there's a, I think there's a lot to be figured out about a lot in Florida right now. So we'll, we'll see how all that goes. Um, Zabin Brown is a guy who I'm sort of iffy on. Yeah, uh, you, you can drop the money bag all you want. 
there's been more than a few players who are prom <laughs> Play, players players in the state of Florida who committed to schools in the state of Florida who were promised bags when the day after they signed and those bags didn't show up. That will get around. We can talk about how we're not happy about Ohio State for not like guaranteeing bags of money to kids in this NIL deal and how everyone else is. The good news about not guaranteeing cash day one to these players. The good news is, is that you're also not missing on these promised paychecks. Guarantee sponsorships with Ryan Day's mortgage. Uh, he's not lived in Columbus that long. He probably doesn't have that much equity in it, for being honest. Um, Zayden Brown uh, from Mater Day in, in California, Santa Ana, California, another cornerback nationally. I'm not going to include Brown in this mock. Ohio State has been not super successful. Zayden Brown, is, is Zayden Brown and Sammy Brown the same guy? Is that what you're asking me, Stuart? He's 24, 24-7, he's Zabin. Um, nope. Okay. Uh, cornerback out of... like Ohio State's not had a ton of success and not for lack of trying getting kids out of Mater Day. Uh, USC being on the rise is not going to help that. Um, we'll see. But a name, a name to watch. Uh, I think he has a visit scheduled. Um, we'll see. Um, now, guys, I was, I was warning you that there was at least one or two names here that I was just going to, no matter what, totally fumble. Uh, here comes one of them. Uh, cornerback out of Baltimore, Maryland. Iffy Odebigwu. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I know that's nowhere near correct. I what, what do you what do you want me to do? I don't know how to pronounce this. It's I F Y is his first name. His last name is O D I, excuse me O B I I D E G W U. I, my Ohio ass doesn't know what to do with that. So my apologies. It's not your fault. It's mine. Uh, but I do. I am putting him in in the class for Ohio State. Um. Again, Ohio State's done a really nice job sort of recruiting that Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia area. And I think that you can continue to see momentum in that area, continuing that pipeline uh, for Ohio State. And I, I think, Jared, without looking, what is Ohio State's current ranked for 2024? I actually don't know. Um, the current class is only four guys. I don't necessarily know what that. I don't know how that compares nationally, because like here's so recruiting rankings in March are sometimes simply dictated by how many people you have in the class. Is four a lot nationally right now? I don't know. 15th 15th is not bad for only having four players signed up and one of them being an underrated Ohio kid. Nave uh, currently ranked 532. All right. Um, a couple more names, a couple more names. Um, We have two safety names and an additional athlete name. Right, let's just get the additional athlete name out of the way. Already committed to this class. Um, cousin of Cade Stover. Uh, we have Garrett Stover. I, I, I don't know what to do with him from a position standpoint at this time. Might be a linebacker, might be a defensive end. It's sort of one of the reasons why I only left two players at those positions at those mocks. 
could be a tight end, could be a defensive end, could be a linebacker. I I'm leaning. <laughs> I don't think he's a fullback. I don't think he's a fullback. But maybe. Maybe he is. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm I'm leaning linebacker or or safety. But I'm I'm sort of leaning linebacker. He's kind of small to play linebacker, if we're being honest. Um, but we'll see. Kind of small to play linebacker, but we'll see. Um, lost my place in my notes. Lost my plates and place in my notes. I have two safeties. Finish this out. We have two safeties committing to the class. Um, one I feel like is a is a realistic option. Um, in Jordan Johnson Rubel, uh, Rubel, uh, out of, uh, the IMG Academy in Florida, uh, excellent all around player, top 100 player in the country, good relationship. He has a visit scheduled. If he hasn't already visited, I forget, but I know he had a spring visit scheduled at some point. Um, I think there's a good relationship here. I think there's a very decent possibility he ends up in this recruiting class. And then screw it. Let's 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 shoot for the stars. Let's let's add KJ Bolden to the class. Uh, everyone in the country wants this guy. Could Ohio State get him? Maybe. I I think that Ohio State has a safety centric defense. I think Ohio State has turned safeties into stars in the past. Very real possibility here for for Ohio State. I doubt it. Yeah, Austin, it's it's not by any means a, a guarantee. And you run into issues, of course, with NIL, right? It is unlikely, not impossible. I wouldn't even say unlikely, to be honest with you. Um, but it's just, it's hard. It's harder than ever to sort of even try and make these predictions and era of NIL and yada, 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 and all that. Um, it's hard. Because, I mean, just just look at Uyunglele. Ohio State had Uyunglele in the in the bag. And, and then they didn't. Last year, talking about the defensive end from last year. Had him in the bag until they didn't. And... A lot of the times people are very quick to just sort of be like, oh, Bagman, NIL, yada, yada, yada. If you can't get Perry's cousin and and his safety driven defense fire knows. In the era of NIL is all I can say, Stuart. All I can say is in the era of NIL. It's it's just it's hard to guarantee anything, which is why we are seeing Ohio State. And again, it really helps that the it's a good in-state class this year. The the talent inside the Buckeye State is strong this year. But one of the other reasons why you're seeing Ohio State take a a strong look inside the state is because of NIL, getting kids who want to play for Ohio State. Reality of the situation. Hot take. No matter what happens next year, Knowles won't be our defensive coordinator in 2024. I don't agree. I, I don't see him as a guy who takes a head coaching gig. I, I assume you're saying if he sucks, he'll be fired. If he's great, he'll get a head coaching gig. I assume is what you mean by that. Um, I, I don't see him as a guy who leaves and takes a head coaching gig after two years. That's just not how I see things playing out with him. Could I be wrong? Sure. Um, say 25 and I'll agree. 25 what? Goes to Rutgers. Oh, 2025, of course. My my brain does not yet acknowledge 25 as a year. That's number 25 isn't a year in my head yet. <laughs> Excuse me. 
All right. Um, that, I believe, was 25 names. Unless I'm bad at counting, which is possible. Maybe been 26, maybe been 24. I forget. It's probably 25. It was probably 25 names. All right. Um, guys, do you have any questions? Do you, do you think I was wrong about anything? Do you think I'm right about anything? Was there an especially egregious omission in my class? I think I had some in Ask Sloopcast, but no, I'll check Ask Sloopcast. Don't get me wrong. I was just asking specifically about what we talked about today first. Anything on topic first? I'm going to go check the Ask, Ask Sloopcast section. And if you guys think of anything, go right ahead. Um, will Bronny James commit to the Buckeyes? I don't feel great about it. That, I, I don't think it's impossible, but I don't feel great about it. If Ohio State could have one player from each position for 2024. Oh, this is actually a recruiting question. Um, realistically, at this point in the cycle, who would you like for them to get? Oh, so I get a one. OK, this is relevant. I like this. Um. No, oh, and and Zach copied it in. Appreciate that. Um, so I can get anyone I want. I'm gonna take Jaden Davis, um, Jordan Marshall. I already got Jeremiah Smith, but I'll I'll count it. Um, I'd get Galloway to stay in state. Um. Offensive line, if I could get anyone, I'm probably going to get Brandon Baker out of Santa Ana uh, along the offensive line. Do I do I get an offensive tackle and a, a, a you uh, oh interior and offensive tackle? OK, um, interior. Um. I mean, I like the Armstrongs. I think I'll stick with the Armstrongs on interior, especially uh, Devontae Armstrong, that is. Um, defensive tackle. Um, I probably didn't even include probably the best names at defensive tackle in my notes. Um, but if I just stick to my notes, I'll go with uh, Aiden Breland. Defensive end, Dylan Stewart. Um, linebacker. I don't know if I have the linebacker I want in my notes either, if I'm being honest. Um, cornerback, uh, go get Charles Lester. Troy, Troy Poles, that was last recruiting class, wasn't it? Uh, safety is, is KJ Bolden, of course. Um, defensive end, think about it a second longer here. Probably Elijah, Ru uh, Elijah rushing, um, just go get anyone I want. Probably him. Um, defensive tackle. I'm going to have to go look for my defensive tackle. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go shopping for a defensive tackle. Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me, everybody. I'm going to go shopping for a defensive tackle. Going to gonna go shopping for a defensive tackle. Still looking. Parker Hudson might be a good name. David Stone's a good name. I like a David Stone. Yeah, let's go David Stone. Stuart, your your emoji has taken up the entire Discord chat window. You win. What did you win?
The name game? I have in game. Justin Scott might be a good pickup as well. There's a lot, I think there's some defensive tackles to choose from. I think some good defensive tackles out there to choose from. Hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully Ohio State can go nab one of those guys. I just don't feel confident enough about any one of them to include them in the in the defensive tackle mock. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, that was uh, surprisingly relevant. Or did you put that in? Did you put that in after we started talking? No, you didn't. Somehow Austin knew magically that we were going to be talking about recruiting today. Talk to the Stuart head in the corner. No, I will not be talking to the Stuart head in the corner. All right, that's... Uh, I believe that's it. I believe that's the end of the show. Um, this is normally where I'd kick it over to Kyle to talk about what's in Kyle's corner this week, but I ain't got nothing. Um, hey, Austin, do you want to pick music for the end of the show? Or anyone, for that matter, if anyone names? Talk about Holtman. We talked about Holtman last week. Two cal I did two cal garage last week. We can do it again. I don't care. We'll do it again. Okay, we'll do it again. Um, we talked about Holtman all last week. No one listened. No one likes it when we talk about basketball. You do. Uh, you're So you're the one. <laughs> we talk about basketball. We put basketball in the thumbnail. No one listens. No one watches. No one listens. Reality of the situation. I don't know what to tell you. He's got, he's got, he's got a chance next year. To sum up last week's episode, he's 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 gonna he's gonna be the coach at Ohio State next year. I feel confident in saying that. He has a really good recruiting class behind him, who now has experience. He has a really good recruiting class coming in. If he can combine those two elements into a cohesive team next year, which if the end of the season is of any indication, maybe he can. And I think they could make a really nice run next year. Has a decent center for inside outside game. Yeah. If he can, he, here's the thing. It is set up perfectly. He, he has his two best recruiting classes back to back. He'll have a talented group of sophomores and a really good recruiting class of freshmen coming in behind him. But first, he has to keep all those people in Columbus. After a shitty season, he has to stop them from transferring, and he has to make sure that the recruiting class actually shows up. And then, after that, get those two groups to work together Royal has to start. I think we talked about that last week, too. I think we put together a, a starting five for next year, but that's on last week's show. Go listen to last week's show. Um, Thornton's going to be a dog in the locker room. I hope so. They're going to need leadership. I, I don't think he will be on the team next year. That's just my theory. That's that's my personal opinion. I don't think Zed Key will be on the team next year through one method or another, I don't think he'll be on the team next year. So Oak Para is going to have to be that guy. He's going to have to be that guy. All right. That's it. That's okay. I want Bron. Everyone wants Bron. Getting, getting Bronny. If only for the attention. Yes. Getting the son of LeBron James would be enormous for the profile of Ohio State basketball. Bryce better than Bronny. I agree with you, but Bryce isn't committing, 
right now. Bronius. What Bronny gives to Ohio State, if he commits to Ohio State, is a complete and utter raise in profile. And in college athletics, a raise in profile is insanely important because it helps you to get players to transfer in. It helps you to on it helps you bring in guys on the next recruiting class. Why does why is Ohio State so good at recruiting wide receivers and quarterbacks? Because they recruit wide receivers and quarterbacks. Heartline's great. Heartline's uh, amazing. But make no mistake, Heartline is absolutely aided by the fact that is absolutely aided by the fact that Ryan Day is amazing at recruiting and developing quarterbacks. What attracts a court, what attracts a wide receiver to a team? Good quarterback play. What attracts a quarterback to a team? Good wide receiver play. It's a self-feeding thing. And the perception is enormous. Ohio State's in a position where they could have an offensive lineman, a wide receiver, and a quarterback, and it's a bit of a stretch, but maybe it's possible, all drafted in the top 10 in the NFL draft. It's a possibility. What does that do? That helps you convince an elite offensive tackle to come to Ohio State. That helps you convince, well, you don't have to convince top quarterbacks or wide receivers to come to Ohio State. They're already convinced, but it keeps feeding the narrative and it keeps the best players to keep showing up. And hopefully the Paris Johnson Jr. Hopefully he goes in the top 10, but even if he doesn't, he probably goes in the top 15. Hopefully that helps to continue to feed the narrative for the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and starts a, a new trend of top flight offensive tackles coming to Ohio state because Ohio state hasn't had an offensive tackle drafted in the first round since yada, yada, yada. And it's a big thing. Well, guess what? We can end that thing because it wasn't that long ago that Ohio state was on a huge drought, getting wide receivers and quarterbacks drafted in the first round. Decker was the last one. Yes. But Stuart, I hate to break it to you. That was a while ago. That's 2016. And if you're a high school student, 2016 was a long fucking time ago. Still live off of the Orlando Pace name. I mean, that's not totally true. But no, Tyler, Tyler Decker is, is definitely someone who you can hold up. But hell, I mean, you already have. Yes, Taylor. Sorry. Uh, Taylor Decker. These are names that he's still getting paid in the NFL, right? He's still in the NFL. He's still getting paid. So you can still show that. You can still show that to kids, but it's, you know, compare that to what Alabama or Georgia has been doing with offensive tackles, what Michigan's been doing with offensive tackles in more recent years going to the NFL. You're, you're not putting the same resume on the page, but if you can get a, you, you will get a first round. And then where, where do they have Dwan Jones post combine? I haven't really like deep dove the draft yet. They have him as a second rounder at this point. End of first. I mean, that would be huge. You get two first round tackles. Top second. Yeah. I mean. You two guys in the top 50. That's that's big. That, that'll that'll help. You know, we talk about some of these big offensive tackles from around the, the, the country. Brandon Baker, Daniel Calhoun or whoever. Lots of mocks to Cincy at 28. That that'd be amazing. That's what you need to do. Along with just having Justin Fry, who's now in his, you know, a full recruiting cycle, you get Fry in a full recruiting cycle. 
you have two first round, hopefully two first round offensive tackles in this year's draft. That's what you need to do to tip the tip the wheel. Change the narrative and start bringing again, these top flight national offensive tackles back into Ohio State because it's been a while. It's been a while since Ohio State brought in a, a, a huge out of region offensive tackle. Um, the kid from New Jersey was the last one, but that was like a hundred percent. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm blanking on names. My Adderall's running out. My ability to recall names is going to hell. So I'm, I'm going to stop before I get too far behind on myself. Um, so I think we're going to end it here. Um, Austin already requested we play uh, Two Cow Garage again, and I'm all for that. I love Two Cow Garage. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage.